What's up everyone, this is Josh Room. Today I wanna to talk about the importance of minerals, specifically sodium, potassium, and your blood pressure. But before we jump in, as always, please like this video, show us a little support, and hit that notification button and subscription button so every single Wednesday when we put out a video, you get notified. Let's jump in. So here's the thing. We live in a chronically stressed society that is a sodium dominant society, a potassium deficient society, and a carb driven society. Now, of course, there's more to this, but a lot of this leads to stress in the system. The stress in the system becomes chronic, right? Stress is good, it builds adaptation. It's like a roller coaster, right? We should be stressed, but we should be able to get off that roller coaster and regulate. The problem is we're always here. Right, everyone is always here. This is why we're seeing so much illness and sickness and sleep issues and hormonals and infertility and immune system issues in our society. It's getting worse and worse by the day, right? Stress isn't bad, I'm not saying live in a bubble, but we need to build resiliency and live in a way that allows our body to go here, but come back down and rebuild. It's like you spend money in your life, but you also work so you can replenish that money and save money, right? That's how we need to live. So here's the thing, chronic stress, when we're always here, that stimulates the sympathetic adrenal medullary system. Sympathetic system, just sounds cooler. Um, which causes the production of renin and the stimulation of angiotensin 2 and aldosterone. This is a problem because you don't wanna always be here because our cells naturally wanna push out sodium and pull in potassium. And that ratio between Sodium potassium should be one to four. Or if you want to say potassium to sodium, the ratio should be four to one. It just sounds a little more natural. Four so potassium, one sodium. The problem is we live in a sodium dominant society, right? And people aren't eating enough apricots and winter squashes and salmon and sweet potatoes and aloe juice and coconut water and on winter and spinach and all these things that support the, you know, support potassium, that have potassium. But the problem is if you're chronically stressed, right? These hormones that you're producing will cause your cells to hold on to sodium. And wherever sodium goes, water goes, right? It's gonna be in your plasma too, in your blood. More sodium, more water. More water, blood expands, more pressure on the vessels, we get blood pressure. Because potassium, when your cells hold on to the sodium, and they shouldn't, should be going out with potassium in, that four to one ratio, because potassium plays a huge role in pushing out extra sodium that we don't need and getting it out of the body, right? I don't wanna say less sodium, but a more regulated uh, ratio to sodium causes less water, causes less blood expansion, less pressure on the vessels, which decreases blood pressure or regulates your blood pressure, right? Now, of course, there's so many other factors, right? We could talk about the nervous system and the thyroid, but I'm just giving you the general picture of what's going on because you could apply this to people with thyroid issues. You could apply this to people that are locked in dorsal vagal or sympathetic. It's all one and the same what is happening within the system, right? So when we're chronically stressed, we produce these, horm these hormones, aldosterone, which cause our cells to hold onto too much sodium, which they don't want to, and lose too much potassium and other minerals right? What happens is water follows, that causes expansion, that causes pressure on the vessels, that causes, because our blood's expanding, causes increased blood pressure, but we don't have the potassium there because we're losing it to get rid of that sodium. It's a protective mechanism. So I know I say use aloe juice and coconut water and sweet potatoes and salmon and spinach and pumpkin and winter squash and apricots, all your potassium rich foods, which we need more of. But the problem is this, if you're still in a chronically stressed state, it's not gonna do much, right? Because you're still losing so, uh, potassium and you're still holding on to too much sodium, right? And as I said, the equation is, it's chronic stress plus a sodium-driven society, right? Um, and a carb-driven society, which plays a role in this as well. So what we need to do is look at what we're eating, maybe eat less box food, less canned food, and not focus so much on the sodium if you're in this health arena, right? We're always like, eat sea salt. Well, that is great, but there's a lot of people that eat sea salt, and they're very salt sensitive, which really means potassium deficient, and they get a lot of swelling. It's because they don't have enough potassium to push out all that excess sodium. So I don't agree that initially the focus should be sodium, right? Salting your food, putting salt in your water. I don't agree with that. 
Why? Because people are, are, have already too much sodium in the system and they don't have enough potassium to regulate that. What I do think needs to happen is we need to look at how we're living and how we're eating to support our body differently, to get it out of this stress state so we can build resiliency. So our cells begin to push out more sodium and pull in more potassium. That'll help us get rid of all that extra water, all that extra sodium, right? As we do that, we bring in things like the adrenal cocktail, the coconut water, the aloe juice, all those potassium rich foods to replenish now that we've stopped the stress response and we stopped the chelation, so we replenish. So the potassium, in my opinion, plus regulating how we're living and eating is the most important thing when you talk about blood pressure. It is the, or any, really, this could be applied to anything, not just blood pressure, um, just regulating stress within our physiology. But potassium is the most important thing beside reducing that stress, right? Because it's gonna help you with the sodium. And once you start to see those potassium levels rise, you're gonna be less sodium, or a salt sensitive, sodium sensitive. And you can start maybe using mineral drops or sea salt on your food or putting it in your water or putting it in your, your adrenal cocktail. But the first thing is change how you're living, change how you're eating to support your body, to get your that sodium potassium pump to regulate, right? So you can pull in more potassium, get rid of some of the sodium, get rid of some of the water, decrease the amount of blood volume, decrease the pressure in the arteries, lower your blood pressure, bring in the potassium rich foods, and you'll be good to go. It's really that simple, right? It's reducing stress, reducing sodium dominant foods, bringing more potassium and over time, when you're less salt sensitive or potassium deficient, then you can start bringing in the sea salt. So as always, any questions, post them below. Appreciate your support, I'm out.